Hey everyone, I'm Scott Branley. And I'm Alicia Coakley. Every member of the church has a story to share, one that can instill faith, invite growth, and inspire others. On today's episode, we're going to hear how one Marine's experience to fight on the side of right helped him to discover his true mission to lead others to Christ. Welcome to Latter-day Lights. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Latter-day Lights. We're so glad you're here with us today. We have a special treat, um, Devin Cummins. Devin, how are you doing today? Great, thank you so much for having me. Uh, this is a new experience for me. So I, uh, you know, right when we were starting, feeling the spirit pretty strong. And so I, uh, I appreciate this um, this opportunity cool. to even to be here. Yeah, yeah we're, so we're glad really, here. we're really excited. So, and I, I feel like, uh, you know, for our guests, our guests don't probably know the process, but a lot of the times I do a little phone interview before we schedule a guest to come on just so that we can kind of talk through little bits of the story. I don't ask for all of the details because I do still like to be surprised. But our phone interview, our 15 to 20 minute phone interview was what, two hours? We were just we had so much to talk about. It was so enlightening. And so for all of our guests, I'm sorry, you guys only are going to get Devin for like an hour or so. <laughs> but he has so much good stuff to share. And I'm just super, super excited about whatever is going to come out in this. I think that you have such an incredible story and perspective. And um, and I definitely could feel the spirit the whole time we were talking. And so I'm really, really thankful to to you for coming on our show today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. No, so, Devin, why don't you tell everyone a little bit about you? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, we'll be we'll be cruising through this, so um, which is which is good. I feel like I'm pretty long winded. Um, <laughs> yeah, I have I have a lot of tattoos. Actually, this one is actually a tattoo that 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 is responsible for uh, it's the throat chakra. Talking about you know speaking authenticity oh. and truth, and and most of my all my stuff has different significance and things like that. Um, and so I am pretty long winded. So, um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I grew up in a single parent family home. Um, not as traditional as today, whereas a lot of times it's the single mother, it was a single father this time. Um, so I had one sister growing up and, uh, you know, we, uh, we were raised in the church. Uh, we, we went to church, you know, every Sunday, um, I came into the Aaronic priesthood as a deacon and a teacher called president even, uh, where I would help. And, and then in the priest, um, I came into being a priest and helping organize and orchestrate the sacrament and making sure everything was very organized and systematic and kind of interesting. I already had a lot of structure going uh, before then, uh, you know, I ended up graduating and, and going into the military. Something uh, really kind of to note, though, is I was very, very introverted growing up, very, um, very shy. And I didn't know how to talk to girls because I feel like I didn't really have one to connect with or talk to, you know, a mother figure on a regular basis. She lived out of state and bless her heart. She has her own things that she's dealt with and worried and gone through and things. Um, but it set me off on kind of a unique uh, life where I needed the compassion and the nurturing from my dad. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, he, and he is, you know, he's, he, he has a big heart. Um, and he, you know, he's still, still a very masculine guy regarding like cars and like working on those types of things. And we do trips and stuff. And so, you know, uh, loving parents in their own way. Um, but uh, uh, most of the time I was just kind of doing my own thing. I didn't do a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff with him. And then my sister, as a normal sister, didn't want to really have anything to do with me because I'm the annoying little brother, right? <laughs> um, and so, you know, we... Uh, we, we, it was just kind of the three of us growing up. Um, I actually ended up becoming a yell leader, a military leader in high school and oh. came, started to come out of that shell and started to be more motivated on working out. So that way I could actually, uh, like pick human beings up over my head and balance, <laughs> and balance them. And I ended up doing that into college too, uh, for a semester. And so that was kind of cool. You just picked people up all through oh. college. Just, Hey. <laughs> Can I pick you up? <laughs> and cheer. Yeah. What's, what's I guess that is one way to pick up women, right? Like quite literally. <laughs> you know, <it's> cool. <laughs> you know and, and I didn't even have a girlfriend in, in high school or anything like that. I didn't have anybody, you know, I didn't kiss a girl in high school. None of that. I was really shy still, but, uh, but, uh, but, but yeah, yeah. When we're stunting and all that, I'm not like, you know, Hey, uh, 
I mean, I don't know. That would be really kind of <laughs> maybe if <laughs> I could just sort of like that seems so weird. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but what's interesting is most guys that would make fun of me for that, like they don't realize that when I came into a later career, and we'll like get into that. I actually know how to throw human bodies. So when it comes to protecting other people, I'm really good at utilizing my body weight and I can throw full grown men. Holy and, cow. And so it's, it's awesome because people would make a joke. Oh, you know, where's your skirt and all this stuff. And I'm like, Hey, I'm around the most beautiful, cool gals or women, you know, all this. And it's so, it's so fun. And I don't know, like I actually started to really enjoy my life in school. And so it was cool. Nice. So, and that confidence. So something kind of funny though is people always say like in boot camp, you know, they break you down and they build you up. And I decided to join the Marine Corps at 17 and do like some some training in a, in a delayed program. I didn't tell my mom, so they actually knocked on her door and was like, "Hey, uh, sign here." And and she's like, "What am I signing?" And uh, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, your son's joining the, the the Marine Corps." And and she she calls me crying, you know, and and. Uh, I'm like, you know, I'm like 17. I'm like, eh, you know, I don't know what I'm, and, <laughs> and, uh, but I'll, I'll be honest. Like I was in this program for like 11 months. So right after I graduated high school, I turned 18 and then I went in October to, to boot camp. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I, what a culture shock, you know, I, mm -hmm. here I'm doing rah, rah and it's fun and it's cool with all these friends and everybody loves you or, you know, you, at, to, to life is a little, uh, more on the other side of the coin, preparing you for war, you know? Yeah. Right. And wow. I did, I did sign up to, to, to serve my country, to protect my country, to, to learn how to be a protector and, and to be a leader and to take these, this very hard thing and, and, and help, help mold. And, and, uh, I guess you could say, uh, create a base for where I was going in my life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I, I, I had a lot of things that I didn't like for sure. I, a lot of things that, that were really hard for me. Um, I got a chance to go to, you know, various countries. I started in reserve and then I got activated. And so I got a chance to train in Japan and Ukraine and Israel. And even in Israel, we were having attacks on us. Well, essentially on the Israelis, um, while we were there in, in 2007, and then uh, in 2008, at the very end of 2008, we got activated. And so we, mm -hmm. we went to Iraq in 2009. Okay. And um, yeah, we were in Operation Iraqi Freedom and essentially there as a peacekeeping mission. But sure enough, there's still stuff. There's there's mortar attacks. There's small arm fires. There's there's you know, there's 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 stuff. There's hostile environments all over the place. And. Mm -hmm. You know, and, but that's the way of life. Like, that's how it is. And that's what you kind of accept. And so I guess to fast forward, I didn't know once I got out what specifically I wanted to do. I, I have a connection with like the youth and, and children and looking after them and teaching. And so I decided I was like, I'm either going to be and, I, and a protector. So I'm like, should I be a cop or be like an elementary teacher? Because I don't think I don't know if I could do the junior high thing or the high school thing, right? I was gonna say both are really dangerous. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your life is in jeopardy either way. Yeah, it takes a certain <laughs> level of caliber in order to do either career, <laughs> right? Yeah, oh, both of them are gonna yeah. try your patience for sure. For sure, for sure. But uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I honestly, I didn't, I didn't know what direction to take, and. Um, and during this time, you know, I, I've always been a, a person of, of prayer. I pray before I eat. I pray before I drive. I pray before I sleep. I, 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 st I try to stay connected and I try to listen to the spirit on, on, on direction and what feels well and what feels like where I'm supposed to go and what I'm supposed to do. And I know, I know we have different things personally with what we feel and how that relates to us on a personal level. Sometimes we think it's maybe our thoughts, maybe it's the spirit. And so I try to be in tune of, what is what? And, uh, I, I didn't have, I had a lot of good times with like my, my, my brothers in the military and a lot of good people and a lot of rough situations too, um, regarding the dynamics, the things we went through. And, and I don't want to make this whole, um, podcast about like all the different experiences with that, because I want to move to like where things are headed 
now with things. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've got to say, I didn't know what direction to go professionally. And so I was working for the state of Utah at the same time as working contracted federal security at the same time working as a bouncer on the weekends. And it was, it was burning me out. And uh, I was actually trying to um, uh, prepare myself to go to the temple with uh, my kid's mom, <laughs> mm-hmm. my, my wife at the time that we had not been sealed yet. So we were, we were looking towards doing that. And I thought that maybe bouncing in an environment of everything that a bar club and everything entails wasn't very conducive to my relationship. And so we, we went through that. Um, we went on track with that. And, um, from there, I ended up having one of the most, the, the, one of the biggest blessings I could have experienced. I, first of all, not only started paying like tithing, full tithing, uh, right bef- uh, in this summer, but that fall I quit the bouncing job. And so here I'm having two financial avenues kind of mm-hmm. go essentially. Right. right. And, and yet the month after I quit the bouncing job, I got offered a career position possibly in the federal government. And, and so I, uh, I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. I was ecstatic. And, uh, and, and it wasn't until the following March that I pumped out to the Academy out in Georgia. Um, they have a federal law enforcement Academy out there and, and let the games begin. And, uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the agency was kind of a paramilitary type agency. Um, you know, I, Went through the academy. I had to go back for all sorts of different classes and trainings. And they made me an instructor with defensive tactics and with firearms and with taser and with use of force. And then they sent me back again to become an instructor for the security officers for processing uh, security through federal properties like, you know, whatever federal agency, whether it's a federal building or the IRS or the Social Security or something like that. And so I was pretty I was pretty busy. Uh, We our agency, we essentially would do uh, deployments at times, not, this wasn't like a regular thing, but we'd go to maybe, uh, when they were doing a border surge up, uh, by the South border, uh, when they had civil unrest, like in, uh, you know, Portland, Oregon, um, right. hurricane, hurricane Harvey, things like that. Right. And so lot, lots of cool opportunities. And, um, what's, what's unfortunate though, is it was really my dream job that really started to become really, even after the first year, very, very difficult. I was one of the youngest guys in the office and in actually our, uh, uh, in our whole region, I was the second youngest guy in our whole region. And there was a lot of people and, um, I felt really kind of like a little, um, out kind of on my own. I don't know if you want to call it ostracized or, but I felt like I was very, just kind of my own, um, felt a little alienated a little bit. (laughs) And, um, and so, that kind of just, you know, one thing after another, one situation after another, one, one thing after another constantly led to, I started to get really, really, really anxious and really, really, really depressing because it, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like marrying the person of your dreams. And then it just turns into this really not what you thought. Mm-hmm. And it starts to get really heavy and you you get really lost on what you should do. And, um, and so I'd say that I really had my heart broken on that because I, I wanted to stay. I thought I was going to be with them forever. I, I started looking at other agencies that didn't work out and I was pretty lost on what to do. Um, I had gotten married again during that time because not, not to a second current wife. I had divorced the first seeing how we don't practice the other stuff. Right? <laughs> no, but, uh, but, uh, Essentially, that that had dissolved several years prior, um, which all has its own stories and things like that. And I, and I was actually looking forward to my future after that with my first uh, divorce. I was going to the temple. I was I was in a good place. So I know a lot of people mm-hmm. fall apart after these things. I was actually in a really good place, and um, and so I'm, I'm now uh, coming out of this. You know, I, I leave my career the spring of 2020. And, um, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have no idea. I just know if I stay, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, period. And, um, it was, it was getting that hard. And, um, and so I, uh, 
but but I had to leave. And so of course that's going to put some stress and strain on the on the on a marriage, and uh, and and it, and it did. And um, and so I, uh, her and I ended up having kind of a declining marriage. She went out of town for a while back to she was visiting her own home country for a little bit, and I uh, ended up uh, getting COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so I leave my career. I'm having a declining marriage. I get COVID and it's really rough. She's out of the country and she comes back and we finalize a divorce. Uh, and so it was the fall that was like, you know, come December. And so she's, she's gone and it's February. And, um, it was four years ago around this time. And, um, I didn't know, I didn't know why I was still here. I, I didn't know. I don't have my career. I don't have this purpose. I'm not in the military. I'm not in law enforcement. I'm not in, I'm not in anything. What am I a part of? Right. And, uh, and I, and I, and I said a prayer and, um, I sat, I was actually sitting against my wall next to the bathroom and I thought maybe today was the day. I thought maybe after realizing there's nothing here for me and I have two children and yet I've been told many at different times that what they think of me, which isn't too much. And sometimes, you know, you go in your head and think that it might be better if you just weren't here anymore. You know, yeah. you, know you don't have purpose. Like no one wants you here, you know, no, no connection or closeness with any family. So why not help God out? And I, I wasn't, I didn't want to do something out of just anger and, 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 and I'm mad. Um, it's more of, I'm sad that I've got nothing to give here and I'm, I don't have it. I don't have any purpose here. Right. So this is what's interesting. I, so I said a prayer and I said, heavenly father, please give me a sign that I'm done here. And I, and I had my eye on my safe beforehand and I don't, you know, I, I keep what I need to in there. And I said, give me a sign that I'm done here and I'll help the, make this come to fruition. And I didn't know how much guts I was going to have or whatever to keep moving forward with this. But I knew that in the mindset I was in, I didn't see anything on the other side of this wall. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted a sign that he was, he gave me the green light that I was done here and I was going to help that. Wow. And I got a text message right after my prayer. And it was my bishop that I've never texted before. And he's like, Hey, are you doing okay? Wow. <laughs> and uh, uh. I'm like, I, uh, I'm not, I'm not doing so good right now. Um, Maybe, yeah. Uh, and I didn't know what to say to him. And he's like, you know, what? I'm going to get some guys over and I'm going to come over and we're going to hang out with you for a minute. And he did. And they, they gave me a blessing and trying to give me some comfort and they hung out. And those things that were occupying my system had, had, had gone. Wow. And um, I tell you what, though, it has been, a, it has been a, a journey since. And I have been taking care of full, full, 100%, full, I don't even know the word for it, completely. Um, and, and so, uh, yeah, very blessed and fortunate. What's interesting is regardless of my, of, of where I've been in life, there's like God's in everything. And I think that's something that I, I feel like I, I, it's been coming into me a lot over the last few months, which is very interesting because of like how old I think I am. Maybe I should have figured this out before, but, <laughs> <laughs> but people ask the question, if they're so good or if God's so good, why do bad things happen? And you know, this happened to this person. Like how can God allow that? Right. And, and here's the thing. I would put my life on it that God completely hates the horrible things that happens to his children, whether they're kids or they're adults or whatever the case, wh whoever the case, but he also allows agency. 
And, and that's one thing that keeps him in the position that he's in is he allows agency. Meaning if somebody has the inclination to do something bad, he doesn't fly down here and, and, and put his hand up. What he does is he utilizes the Holy Ghost to influence others to be that sword and to be that shield. And if you don't heed to those promptings, then he also can't do what he's doing, right? Right. And, and so do, do great people die? Yes. Do great people get hurt? Yes. But, you know, we also have a tremendous amount of technology for health stuff. But God's not going to say, if you, I'm going to stop you from eating this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. He says, you should, you know, eat things sparingly and take care of your body and things like that. But if you decide to ignore that and then you do these other things and get heart disease or diabetes and they die, it's like, but that person was a good person and they died. It's like, they also had their free agency to mm -hmm. now, now do some people have like chronic stuff that happened hereditarily? Sure. And a lot of these things were, I believe, because we, we navigated away from taking care of ourselves in whatever level, mental, physical, spiritual ways yeah. that have kind of derailed us a bit from that, that closeness of, of, of wellness, I guess, I guess you could mm -hmm. say. And, yeah. and so there's probably a lot that maybe would not agree with me, but. <laughs> you know, I, it's funny cause I was actually just talking to my husband about this a couple hours ago about the whole, like, um, like you were saying, like, why would God allow so much bad stuff? And, and I think that sometimes too, it's like, he wants to see if we're going to use our agency to become better. Right. Like not, not that he needs to, cause he knows everything that's going to happen, but he wants us to see how we use that agency. And so if you didn't have the bad, if you didn't have these horrible things happening, you wouldn't also be able to see these great examples of people either. You, yeah. you wouldn't get to see the great examples of sacrifice and of perseverance and of love and of, you know, like that, that immense amount of protection that's given and safety and security and things like that. And so I, I think that, you know, it's not even that he's he's making these things happen, maybe not even allowing. Maybe he's maybe he just he, I mean, he just knows so much more than we do. Right. But I, I you know, I, I just think it's one of those things like we don't know everything. We only know how we feel about the information we have. But the information we have is so limited that if we had more, maybe we would understand God more and maybe we'd understand why these bad things happen more. But I love that you were that person that kind of took that agency and you were like, what can I do for good? Like if the bad's going to be there, how can I fight that bad off? You know, whether it's working with the Marines, going into the the military or the government and, and things like that. Like it definitely seems like you are at heart a protector and and a server. And so um, I guess yeah. I'm going to we'll yeah. turn it back over to you. Yeah. So I have a thought on that too. I think a lot of it also comes to put down to perspective because in our perspective, we have a hundred years right, to live or whatever, but in God's perspective, we have eternity. Right. So if, if bad things happen to good people mm -hmm. in his perspective, it is just, it's just that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but to yeah. us, it's like, Oh, our, our child was killed or our, our husband or a friend were killed and they, their life was shortened, but in, in it's in eternal perspective, it's just a blink. Yeah. You know, uh, that brings up a really good point. I, uh, so I have two children and we were actually supposed to have our third, um, back when I was still married the first time and a uh, little dude didn't, didn't make it all the way. And, uh, and we ended up having a little burial service and, uh, mm. I didn't know how to think about it. I didn't, I was really confused. That was a new emotion I hadn't really had before. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause I'd never like lost a, lost a, a kid. And, um, and, and though he didn't make it full term, um, it was enough that we had like a little box for him and put little, <sighs> so, wow. Sorry. Um, okay. So, so we buried him and, um, and, and what's interesting is like, it wasn't until like after the fact that when we, I was like in the store, I would just have like these come aparts and, um, couldn't understand what was going on with me. 
and um and what the perspective was is something that you had mentioned scott is it wasn't until three months later that we discussed having a divorce and it made me wonder that maybe the little guy needed to just get a body and he was just that's it he this pure little soul just needed to get a body didn't need to go through this this soup sandwich that it feels like sometimes <laughs> this this test and 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 just continue on to the next stage of what's the what's to come and and he's you know and and I was we had been sealed by then so we have you know three sealed dust and and uh but that perspective of you know what we were on the cusp of a divorce and how would have that have been for him to experience that at at I think he would be about he he'd be about ten right now and uh or nine and uh and nine or ten yeah wow um but I don't know I don't know what God has for him but I I never was like why God why I'm like I just don't understand it. Uh, I have, a, I really tried to get in the mode of not saying why God or why me? I'm always like, can you just help me like to endure this? Can you help me like mm -hmm. have the strength yeah. to like, right. right. To, right. Uh, to do this. Cause I don't think, I don't think of him as like a spiteful God. I know that people get angry at him or they, and, and, and I, and I'm not going to knock people that do that. I think that they just don't get it. And and I and I'm not saying I'm the omniscient one by far, but I am saying that if it was a spiteful God, I could blame him. But I don't think he is. I believe that he's a loving God mm -hmm. enough that I saw I saw I read a scripture. I've been reading my scriptures pretty religiously, uh, but <laughs> I've been I've been reading them every night, or either the day or the night, but every day for the last two months. And there was a part that had mentioned. Don't you think, and I think this was in Romans, if God can give his own son, he loves you so much that he gives literally his own son to die. Don't you think that he would be happy to give you anything else? Obviously, if it's according to his will. Yeah. Like sometimes we think of a lack of abundance, right? Or we think of like, I don't know. I don't think there's enough of this. And I don't think there's a, I don't think I'll be able to survive that or I don't have enough money for this. And it's like, I think instead of focusing on all these things that could be just like redirect to him. Cause he knows better than all of us of what we need and what, and, and what we want too. He knows that we have wants. Wants aren't bad. You know, he, 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 he talked about the tree of life in, in, uh, in Genesis two. And he said that it was pleasing to the eye. Like he could have made it look terrible with great tasting fruit. You know what I mean? Like the tree of knowledge of the tree of life. He can make that look terrible, but he, he creates things of beauty. He wants things to be pleasing for us because it's, it's just how he is. He's a, he, he's about love and abundance. And I, I truly believe, uh, he wants us to be, I mean, men are that they might have joy, right? And Adam mm -hmm. felt that men might be that they might have joy. And, and my, one of my, my biggest flaws is I carry around everything bad and that the things that I've said and done, and I just put it in a big bag and carry it around with me. And, and, and it's like no way to live. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> and, and I'm trying to give that bag to Christ. I'm trying to respectfully, because I'm like, I mean, here he's this amazing man that wants nothing but to love us and to to bring us closer to him and his father. And I'm like, hey, you see everything that I don't ever want to look at? Can you hold it? <laughs> right. You know, like, like, would you do something with it? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to be disrespectful. So I'm trying to get out of that mindset of like, no, really, that's what he's here for he is that transition from this mortal literally from he went through the more resurrection from mortal to immortal to eternal life he wants us to have that same transition the only way to do that is through christ and and so let the games begin so last year 
I decided to go on a tour through uh, Asia and I went to eight countries in about three months, traveling the world just by myself. And I was making so many cool connections. And what's interesting is there was a very heavy theme with where I kept ending up. And while I was in each country, if I was uh, not traveling directly on a Sunday, I would be uh, looking for a ward near me. So here I'm on the record locator and I'm like, you know, trying to map out the stuff. And, uh, and, and what's interesting is uh, I was finding wards, uh, not only wards, but I was accidentally running into temples, our temples. And uh, because there's temples all over the place in Asia, especially Thailand beautiful but there's there's temples everywhere right but our temples mm-hmm. is a little more less common right right and um and and where i ended up on this little trip where i met this guy uh while it was like a trip within a trip uh, you know here i'm in the philippines and i'm doing this little trip within it and it was and it was this really spiritual special experience where I no joke was listening to like God of wonders and was taking pictures of this church. And as I passed, it was like Lord of heaven on earth and no joke. The picture that was captured was this church and the top of it was Christ Um, Lord of heaven and earth. And I'm like looking at it and I ran into like this homeless guy and how he gave me like a rosary with a little note, thanking me for like getting him water. Like, I had helped him with something that he saw kindness and, and kindness is a universal language. Mm -hmm. Animals understand it. People understand it. Right. Yeah. And then this guy's giving me like a rosary and like a note saying, thank you, brother. Like I, okay. So as I'm moving along though, I end up in, uh, I end up in Thailand and I go up this really cool mountain and it's winding roads and it's, I'm going up to this golden temple. And I have a picture uh, in, in one of the long ones I sent and it's, and it's beautiful. I mean, like this is wild. And unfortunately the clouds are coming in. And so I decide I am going to go down because I don't want to get caught in a rainstorm because I'm renting a motorcycle, like a, <laughs> a like a, like a motor scooter. Right. Um, the thing is with this road though, there's oil on the road. And, uh, and so rain and oil have a bad, uh, mixture with vehicles. And so sure enough, uh, I ended up, uh, coming down this, this road and it starts to, it starts to rain and it's zigzagging. And as I'm going, I pass around this truck and dump the bike and the bike goes flying and it's sliding and it hits the guardrail and it smashes under the guardrail. And I'm flying down the road. My head hits the ground. The helmet goes flying. It's chewing up my pants. It's chewing up my hand. I'm still going. And then I hit the guardrail with my foot, bounce off and spin out. And and it was right in front of a truck that picks up people to put the bikes in the back of the truck to transport them down the mountain. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So they pull, they pull over and three of them get out and start working on unwedging my jacked up bent framed motor bike into the back of their truck to then transport me back to the rental place. Wow. And I'm chewed up. My headphone had like popped out of my ear, you know, and, uh, but all I had was a chewed up hand and, and it, and it's, and, and look, I mean, it's, it's, it's very pretty now. And this thing, I had, I had skin flapping off it. Like it was rough. (laughs) And, and and when I got and when I got back, they ended up giving me. I was like, I need to clean this thing out. This is probably this needs to get cleaned out. And the rental, uh, she, she did not like me very much because I <laughs> <laughs> because I wrecked her bike, right? And right. so yeah. I'm like, do you have anything to clean my wound? And so she said, Yeah, uh, here, and gives me a spray bottle of alcohol, just straight rubbing alcohol. <sighs> <laughs> and I, I've had a lot of pains in my life, but I think that's top tier. Like that's like incongruence. Really, with, like, it was worse than the tattoos and all the things. I would say I would take I would take tattooing my throat and everything else over that any day. I would oh take tattooing gosh. all day versus like that was so. And and so what did she say? She's like, I think you need to do it again. <laughs> and I'm like, she hates, she hates me. Yeah. 
And, uh, and so I do, <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right, I probably could use some more. And so I did it again. And I just remember it was just so excruciating. And, and she said, wow, you are a strong person. You should follow your heart. No joke. That was her response. And, wow. and I thought, I, even since I've been just piecing that together and I, and what I pulled from it is that I am willing to go through pain. I, if it's going to heal me, if it's going to help me, like I'm, I'm willing to go through what's, and if I know it's going to hurt, but I'm still going to do it. I think that takes a lot of character. And um, yeah. so this is what's wild on top of that. I, uh, I, I'd, I'd gone to a different town after that. I flew or I took a train, a night train. What's cool is you can sleep on these trains. And so I was in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand, and I, and I took a train down to Bangkok, Thailand. And it was, it was Sunday. It was coming up on Sunday. I think it was the following day. And I ended up uh, going, uh, I was trying to find the, the, the church, the ward near me. And I end up at this church and they're like, the church is closed. Like we don't, we don't hold church in, in this church. It's actually in the temple building. And he was spoken, broke English, spoken English. And I'm like the temple. Building. Okay. Like there's temples everywhere. Maybe it just means like the steeple or. Mm-hmm. So I see these two other guys and I'm like, guys, we're late. We're late now. We got to go. Let's go. Like these random dudes that were going to church too from Thailand. I was like, come on guys, let's go. So we're, <laughs> we're trying to go. And, 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 and I kind of felt like, I was like, man, these guys are lollygagging. Let's go. Like, and, and I put up on my Google maps. LDS temple near me, just in case. And it's 0.1 mile. It it's around, it says it's around the corner. Mm-hmm. And as I'm walking, I peek around and no joke is the brand new, not even dedicated yet, Bangkok temple. And cool. and guess where we're holding church? In the temple. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, oh my gosh. so we hold church in the temple and it, I end up meeting like these three really cool people. One of them was from, I believe, Malay, I think it was either the, Philipp- the Philippines, another one from Japan and another one from uh, Gaul, a country in Africa and uh, really cool people. And we, I don't know, they just kind of show me around the town and stuff. It was my, it was my first night there and uh, just really good people. But he, I, I didn't know that the temple was right there. And, you know, what was interesting is my next stop was Vietnam. And if you look on the record locator, there are only four, temp- there's only four wards in Northern Vietnam, the entire country. Mm-hmm. There's only, four, there's only four in Hanoi. And I put in my, I, I got on my stay. I was like, you know what? I'll try to go to it. I'll try to go to a church. And I, and I put in the record locator churches near me. And there was one, a rock's throw from me. There's four in the entire country of Northern Vietnam and the, and, and it's around the corner from me. Oh, and wow. so I go and these guys are the kindest people. Oh my gosh. Same with the Philip, like in, in the Philippines, they were like, you know, they greet you when you come in, there's like four people on either side. You're like shaking hands with both sides. They're such a loving people, you know, and, and, and here I am now in Vietnam and they're such a strong like community of members and, um, and then, you know, they, so, so I had these, this, this, this really cool special experience with that. And I got to say, this is one of the most emotional, like kind of takeaways is I got a chance to go to Sapa, which is, it's like, you've seen like those layered rice fields in, mm-hmm. in Vietnam. So this place is, a, it's incredible. It's a whole other world. And when you go there, you can have guides and people that take you on treks around it. And, uh, After, you know, my initial place in Hanoi, you know, I was checking out some other places, beautiful places. And I end up in Sapa and we are to meet at this. It's it's called, it's the Notre Dame Cathedral there and uh, all the tourists there and everything. And when you get there and they see, and everywhere I go, I get a lot of attention because of like my stature, my tattoos, Mm -hmm. I'm American, you know, (laughs) and I think they see, you know, white guy with tattoos, money buy our stuff. Right. Right. But I got flooded with all these, all the, all the kids, all the families and, you know, we're doing pictures and we're, it's so fun. And all these kids want me to buy all their stuff. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, how am I supposed to (laughs) like, 
Like, I'm just like, 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 okay, you have money, you have money. Like, how am I supposed to do this? So I'm like, I'm not buying from anybody. And I'm like, I'm sorry, you guys are so sweet. Like, thank you. Like, and this, this little girl stays behind and I end up like, just, Hey, you know what? Just have this. And I, I gave her some money and I was like, don't tell everybody just, and, and she comes back and she gives me this little keychain guy and he's, he's got brown hair. He's got a little baseball hat and he's got a satchel with a little heart on it. And everywhere I go, I carry my satchel with my little carbon unicorn, like icons on them. Mm. And, and I thought that was so sweet. I was like, wow, this is like, this is like my, what, like my little inner child or something. Right. <laughs> oh, and, and so while she was hanging out and actually, I think I'm not, I can't remember if some of her other friends were still here, but at least her, I, sh- I was showing her some of my fun travel pictures and she saw one of my folders that's labeled spiritual and on it is the picture of uh, Christ pulling Peter out of the water uh, after Peter, you know, kind of loses his faith temporarily. And she had seen it and she leaves and goes and gets back one of her friends. And she's like, she's not even talking. She's just like points to my phone and then looks and then points to the folder and then fi- and finds the picture. It was actually, she pointed to the, so I pulled out my pictures and she pointed to the picture of Peter getting pulled out of the water by Christ. And then gestures to her friend and points to Peter and points to me. And I was like, <sighs> holy smokes, man. Like, and I'm like, I guess I kind of do look like Peter a little bit, you know, but <laughs> What, how symbolic because in my life I've been in so many places where I, I feel like I've been drowning and I've been underwater and I've been scared and I've been like unsure of what to do and reaching out my hand to like get this help and and uh that oh. was really special you know it was really and so uh so as I'm still trekking through I'll, I'll kind of uh I'll wrap up some of these countries I don't know if you guys want to do a part two but I'll wrap through these countries I think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I end up in South Korea. And so this was like my seventh out of my eight countries. So I went uh, Philippines, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, South Korea. And then I'll tell you in a second. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm looking for the ward near me. I'm in Seoul, South Korea. And I end up walking past, I'm walking past this building and there's this open door and I just keep walking past and it's like, you passed your destination. And I'm like, where's the church? And so I I back back up and I look down this corridor of these doors that are open and in the back is the church, is the, it's that that traditional picture of Christ with the red robe that we have in our, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and I, right when I see it, I'm like, yep. I'm at the right place. Like this is, this is our, this is the ward. And uh, so I go inside and as I'm, I'm sitting, we're, we're, we're in a, we're in our, our, our meeting. And uh, well, I think it's actually, it was sacrament at the time. And so maybe I shouldn't have done this, but I was like, Seoul, South Korea, LDS temple. <laughs> and it's like, you're here. And I'm, I'm like, wow wait, what? What do you mean? I'm And and so we get done with the sacrament and one of the guys snags me. And I think based on how I look, he's like, you know, you know, trying to like, we were talking about being active in church and things like that. And I kind of felt like he was like on this mission to convert me. And it's like, I have my testimony. Like I have, like, I know I look, I'm not the traditional, right. <laughs> right. I, but I mean, his heart's totally in the right place. But I said, Hey, is the temple like on the other side of the building? Are we on property right now? He's like, yeah. Did you want to see it? I'm like, yeah. Mm. Like, so we walk up the stairs and we go out this door and the door opens up and there's the temple and there's this missionary building next to it. And it's just, I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, it's just, and I'm thinking, man, like here I am again. Right. And I ended up, 
meeting this other guy that said like, you know, God's aware of what you need right now. Like he worked with like BYU pathways. And so he had, he was on property and he just started talking to me and I, I felt the spirit and I was like, my gosh, like he's like, God's aware of what you need and you know, a really good connection. So I have my special experience with that. And I move along to my last country, Japan. And this is wild. Okay. Talking about like, kind of like this, like, where this all kind of culminates to, I haven't even gotten to like the crazy weird stuff. So I feel bad because I really want to, because I've gotten into some weird stuff since my trip that uh, is very uh, uh, eye opening um, on a spiritual level. Um, yeah. Right. But I want to finish yeah. up on this, on this jet ju- uh, with Japan is I was looking for a ward near me. And the one that I was thought that I should go to, it wasn't having good times. Like it wasn't, it wasn't showing the times available. So I was like, okay, let's try this one. And what's interesting is I went to Japan when I was 19. I turned 19 in Japan at Camp Fuji, Japan uh, with the Mm -hmm. Marines. And so when we had some Liberty, we ended up walking around Tokyo and things like that. And we ended up seeing like the LDS temple and we saw this park and it was beautiful. And, And so fast forward the second half of my life, right? 19 years later. And I'm now walking down the street looking for the ward. And as I'm going, the steeple with Moroni, Angel Moroni emerges. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, and, and, so, and I stop and I said, I get it. You know, like, I get it. It's like, you want me to, you know, of all the wards and all the places and all the, and this is now the third temple I didn't, I wasn't trying to find. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so sure enough, it's like in the visitor center and I end up going to church in the visitor center and I get out and I go to the park and as I'm walking through this beautiful, peaceful, there's like koi in the pond. I mean, it's like this beautiful ambiance. I hear someone calling my name and I'm like, okay, other than the people I just met in the war, like who knows me? I'm in Japan, (laughs) right? It's the guy I met in Korea. It's it's like the guy that like was outside saying like God knows your needs and things like that. He's like Devin, and I I was like you got to be kidding me. And so we talked about life and the future and even like about the brand and what it represents and things. But it was like it was something that he had brought up and he said he called them and he brought this up actually in Korea. But he brought up God winks and God winks are like when you're like wait a minute and he's just being like. I got you. I got you. Yep. That was me. <laughs> yeah. I aligned that. Yep. I put that together, you know, <laughs> and, and, it was so, and it was so special. So what's wild is that the hymn that I sang, um, in, in, in sacrament was hymn number 187 for, uh, God gave his only begotten. I think that's what it's titled. And, and what's interesting is the police code for, excuse me, I'm not like in all reverence, but for murder is 187. And essentially we did that to our own savior, right? The, our mankind did that. And as I'm wa- this is all after church, the temple and all this stuff that night, I'm walking through the night and I don't know what to do with my time. I'm not sure I have nothing planned, but I really want the experience. And this father and son stopped me and they're like, Hey, are you a veteran? And I'm like, what is that? I'm like, I, yeah. And his son was just loves veterans. His son's like in his like mid twenties and he's, I mean, he had kids young and stuff. I'm like, yeah, well, like, do you want to come to an onsen with us? It's a little different than American stuff. So if you want, and I'm like, yeah, sure. We go to the onsen and it's a little, um, a little uncomfortable because, well, you don't have swimsuits because you don't have nothing. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And the thing is, it's not taboo for them there. They're not like weird about it. It's just whatever. Like, right. And we, we start preparing and I notice on his back, he's got tattooed one, eight heaven. And I'm like, bro, uh, dude, uh, I literally just saying that today, but are you saying like one, eight, seven, like he's like, yeah, like the, the, the murder code because you know, and like and Jesus Christ. And I'm like, what? Like, what? Like, how is this? And he's like, yeah, check this out. And he turns around and shows me across his whole chest is the scripture of Isaiah that talks about spreading your wings 
and and flying in the clouds and it's just and I, I have this little mm. thing over here that I don't know if I should get up and show you but like <laughs> I have the scripture in my house and I'm just thinking wow you know and, and he's like read my chest and you know and I'm like reading and I'm like I'm gonna stop <laughs> there I'm, like, I, I'm just gonna assume the rest of the scripture <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> but but very very blessed uh situation and it wasn't and we can pause here but it wasn't only it was only until um after my trip to asia that things ended up taking a flip and mm -hmm. it was and it, it's very overwhelming it's it's hard to talk i mean it's it's weird to talk about but it's very um it's kind of set me off on a very different trajectory over the last several months and uh I'm actually leaving the country again to 10 of them and I'll be trying to visit the temple in some of these other countries and I've, how I've had to prepare and plan these things has taken a tremendous amount of coordination and, and things, but I, uh, I'll be leaving in two days and I, oh, wow. I want him to, I want to be guided to what is, whether, how I can help people, what I can do, what my mission is. Mm -hmm. And, and I'd say right now there's a theme of helping the two thirds that decided to come down here, I'm trying, if I can inspire them to remember their own value, their own worth and God's love to be navigated back to him, then I'm doing something right. Cause I feel like my purpose here is to bring people closer to God because we chose that before we came down here. And if I can connect with the world and help with that, then I think I can be, happy for when I move to the next stage of this existence. You know? Wow. So, well, I think your experiences are very unique. I mean, you've, your life is, is very, very unique to how most of the world lives their life. And mm -hmm. I think that gives you a, like we were talking about perspective, right? It gives you a, a very powerful perspective, especially because you have the gospel in your life. And it, like you're saying on that last trip that you took, it was almost like God's like, hey, <laughs> I have a plan for you. I have something mm -hmm. special for you to do. And I love that. I mean, it almost was like he was like beating you over the head with it, right? Like <laughs> he was like winking a lot. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. You're like, do you I, have something in your eye, God? I don't know. <laughs> I'm slow. It takes a lot for me. Yeah. But I, yeah, I just love how you're just like, okay, I'm going to embrace that. And I'm going to, I'm going to move forward and do a, the best I can to help as many people as I can. I think that's amazing, Devin. Yeah. I think we're definitely going to have to have you back on. And I don't know if we, we need to just coordinate it when you're over in one of the next countries that you're in, yeah. or if we have to wait for you to come back, but uh, you have, you, you do not have a boring experience at all. It is so intriguing. Um, and I can't wait to hear more about your your journey and your mission and just um, all of those other God winks that I have a feeling are are coming your way. I think that it's going to be a really, really cool experience. But Absolutely. Um, before yeah. we go for today, Devin, do you have any uh, last thoughts that you want to leave with our, our listeners? I'd say thank you if you've made it this far because I know I'm long-winded. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, if we did a part two, I'd be happy to record in one of these countries for sure. <laughs> That'd be a special thing. And, uh, that would be cool. Be able to share my testimony out there in another part of the world. But if I'd say that just this last thing is to, if you're trying to figure out why you're here or your purpose, the closer you get to God, the closer you'll find your purpose. So pray about it and whether or not he puts somebody in your way or this video to remind you, mm -hmm. um, he, he does have a plan for you individually. And I think that all he wants is for you to be closer to him. And that's what I would leave with you. So, Thank you. So well, much. thanks Devin for being on the show with us, man. We really appreciate your time and your insight and your story. And yeah, it just means a lot. I think it's going to touch a lot of people's lives. I agree. I have to say just um, that I think the thing that I'm that I personally am walking away with most is what you said a little earlier in the show, which is if I have to hurt in order to heal and to become who I'm supposed to become, bring it on. 
That's right. I love that. I love that so much. I love that attitude yeah. and that perspective just to know that you're really willing to do what it is that needs to get done in order to become who you need to become. So thank you for following your heart and really just doing the things that lead you back to Christ and that, that help others to, to be able to see him and know him too. I think, um, I think you've got some really big missions still to fulfill. (sighs) (laughs) No pressure or anything. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks again, Devin. And thank you for everyone tuning in. Um, If you have a story that you'd like to share with us, we'd love to hear about it. And just go to latterdaylights.com. We'd love to have you on the show as well. Yeah, absolutely. And be sure you guys do that five second missionary work. Hit that share button. Let us know what you thought of Devin's. I'm going to say part one His part (laughs) one today. (laughs) Um, and what you're most excited to hear about, you know, on his part too. We would love to be able to get some of his messages and stuff across. And um, and if you guys have an opportunity, go check out Devin. What is your what is your website? So I started a brand, and I said, well, I would like to maybe create something that could help inspire others, and maybe it can help, you know, help them with certain facets of life. And I've I, I could probably talk on this for a while, but I started this unicorn thing, this ideology back in 2016, I wore a shirt with a unicorn on it. And the amount of attention, positive attention it got from this, this guy wearing unicorns, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Was, was, was so positive and so special. And I'm like, there's something to this. Carbon Unicorn. Okay. Go check out the Carbon Unicorn. See a little bit more about what it's about and uh, and see if you guys want to collaborate with Devin and, you know, support the brand and support the mission and all those kind of things. So we, uh, we are so thankful to you, Devin, again, for sharing your story, for coming on here today. And to our listeners, we appreciate you guys. Until then, uh, until next week, when we have another story, I hope that you guys have a great week. Uh, you're able to be the light and share the light. We'll talk to everyone later. Take care. Thank you. Bye, guys.